Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with red and white. He weighs 154 pounds, and since capturing Olympic gold in 1996, he has a perfect professional record of 11 straight victories in as many bouts, including seven by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, the number eight ranked WBA junior middleweight in the world, the pride of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the American dream, David. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, blue, and red. He weighs 152 pounds and brings an outstanding professional record to this ring. 38 victories with 32 knockouts, only two losses and one draw. He has held the title since 1996 and tonight makes his fifth defense. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, from Salange, France, presenting the reigning and defending WBA Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, Laurent Boudouane. Hey, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules that they've been gone over. I want you to remember two things. Obey my commands. And number one, defend yourselves at all times. Good luck. Shake hands and come out of the belt. David Reed says that this will be like fighting for the gold medal again. When he fought for the gold medal, he was headed toward a decision loss in the third round against the veteran Alfredo Duvajal of Cuba when he suddenly launched the right herd round the world, a perfect right-hand shot that dropped Duvajal into a stupor on the canvas and gave the USA its only gold medal of the 1996 games in boxing. Remember, there was only one gold medalist on the 1992 American Olympic boxing team as well, a fellow named De La Hoya. David Reed is a good, good boxer. He's more effective when he can make the guy come to him. So he's going to be trying to make the champion follow him a bit. He has power, but is not going forward. If David Reed doesn't set a fast pace, and he's often tactical rather than furious in the first couple of rounds, he sort of plays into Budwani's hands. Budwani is a, a 50 punch around guy who likes to get a look at his opponent, measure him, and try to set himself for power shots. Budwani has got to go out there and show this guy, look, I'm the champion. You're just not going to just walk over me. I've got something other than a reputation, uh, than a title belt. I can fight. You got to establish that early with a young contender like this. Reed is very dynamic. He's always moving something. Feet, hips, stomach, or something. It's interesting how much Reed's left eye droops when you see him here in the ring, because when you see him in daylight, it isn't drooping. According Good. to his trainer, Al Mitchell, the light and the heat make him make his eyelid droop. Well, of course, the beginning of his professional career was delayed as he had surgery on that eyelid. But apparently no surgery will completely limit the effect of the drooping syndrome. Budawani was able to land the first good right hand. That established, hey, I can punch. And one of the things that Al Mittel, Reed's trainer, said admiringly about Budawani is he's a good counter puncher. He will counter David's good shots. David Reed does not allow you to set up and think about what you're going to do. You think about one thing, he moves in another direction and makes sure you have to think of another thing. Good left hook by Reed. Difference in hand speed, obvious early, as Buduani gets off one punch at a time, and Reed is able to fire combinations. 
Who'd want his things to be thinking as a puncher, waiting on one shot, and he did it. Good right hand, that hurt. Excellent right hand shot by Buduani, and you saw Reed smiling. That hurt. Sure indicated. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't laughing, he, he was smiling that I got that one, I caught that one. Breathe, breathe. You have to work one, two, three. It's good. Just keep on. You're waiting a little too much when you don't have to wait. These close rounds like this, these are the ones we need to win. Remember we watched the tape? Yeah. He boxed only when he won. It. You got to win these. Yeah. Here you see Reed walking out moments ago, and you see his left eye is not as wide open as his right eye, but it's not as noticeable as it is now. Right now, it almost appears that his left eye is at half mast, go, or go. his left eyelid. We expected David Reed to be the busier of the two fighters in round one by CompuBox numbers. He threw 58 punches. Buduani only threw 30. But Buduani landed just as many and landed the harder shots. Eight of 12 power shots. Buduani is smart. He goes out there and attack three shots and then step back. So come and get me, youngster. He likes to attack you and then take a walk, which is what you want. David Reed is like a sniper, like a snake. He sn sticks a left jab in and gets right out of the way. Who's one that seemed to be interested in a right hand? I'm going to catch you. He's definitely looking for Reed to do all the leading. If you want to be champion, you're going to have to lead. Can't sit back and say I'm going to take a man's champion, championship, counter punch all night. And remember, despite all the hoopla surrounding Reed, it is Buduani in the white trunks who holds a world title coming into this fight. Whacking him twice with the right hand. Reed drops his hands as if to say, "You ain't got nothing." Well, let me tell you, he did have something. Those punches hurt. Reed working the right hand to the body. Very smart about getting in those body shots early on in the fight. It's very apparent that Madwani does not want to get hit by the right hand. He's really trying to neutralize Reed's right hand and making him beat him some some other way. Oh, another overhand right by Budwani. That one came from an unusual angle, and Reed didn't respond well to it. It landed flush on the jaw. Well, as soon as Reed stops moving just a little bit, the champion takes off on him. You can't be still. Hard right hand body shot by Reed. Buduani landing with the right upstairs as well. Still, the challenger is trying to pick the fight. one is very defensive minded throws a right hand occasionally just to make the youngster think about it I have a right hand too well he's got a style that just sort of naturally slows the pace of the fight he's gonna make you fight at his work rate there's a good straight left hand by David Reed stopped Buduani as Buduani was trying to come in and attack uh, and as we go to Buduani's corner between rounds our French interpreter is Thierry Courjean. <sighs> okay, Laurent. Uh, Laurent, you have to move. Don't wait for him. Huh? Are you okay? Can I have water, please? Okay. Oh, I'm going. okay, I know you're looking for the shot, but forget about that. Keep the jab working, score with the jab. One, twos, and threes, and step around. We just want to build up a lead, and then he'll come out of it. Okay? How you feel? Okay, you're doing good. 
You're smarter than him. He's a veteran, yeah. but you're a little smarter than him, and you got a little more speed. Okay? okay? All right. Al Mitchell telling Reed, stop looking for the one big punch. Just fight him. Build up a lead. And then he'll have to come to you, and then you can you can try to get, nail him. So far in the first two rounds, CompuBox punch trackers have Buduani landing at the much higher rate. Reed had trouble finding Buduani in the second round. Now David steps forward behind the jab and doubles it up. Now his corner told him right, build up a big lead and then go after the bigger shots. I like that. It's seldom you hear a corner tell a guy, build up your lead. And that's what Reed's corner told him. Go build up your lead. Step back, step back, step now Reed seems to be beginning to solve the Buduani puzzle just a little bit as he starts to fire and land the jab with much greater frequency than at any time in the first two rounds. The champion Buduani is a very solid fighter. Keeps his defense no matter what you do to him. Keeps his hands in position. Reed is measuring a jab. Very good jab. Much more effective in this round as he throws his jab with greater frequency. Missed with the right hand, kind of chuckled about it. Buduani's got the look of a guy who would be a body puncher, but he doesn't fire to the body all that often. Yeah, he likes to do everything around the shoulder limb. Nice shoulder. Everything is going to come from that shoulder. And you saw the counter left hand that landed and sort of snapped Reed's head back a little bit. Reed has been consistent with these right hands to the body. A lead and follow kind of fight. David Reed trying to step forward and take the lead. Bunuati working off of what Reed does and effectively so, so far. Whenever Budwani leads with the right hand, he's, he does well. <laughs> Reed just missing with the right hand over the top of Budwani's head. God drops his hand. That means you should go get him. And Budwani pounding away with those right hand leads. As George told you, he's been able to land over the top of Reed's left. Never seems to miss when he does it. So Buduani tastes the power in the Reed right cross for the first time. Buduani landing a left as Reed steps in. Got that right hand of Buduani again. And Reed going back to the body with the right as he's done so frequently early on. What you want to, what you want to do is land those right hands to the body and make this fella drop his left hand a little bit. Let's take a look at some upcoming sports programs on HBO. Boxing After Dark returns later this month with a heavyweight doubleheader. Ike Bayabuchi, best known for his thrilling decision over David Tua, takes on another excellent fighter, Chris Bird. Also, Canadian Kirk Johnson and Al Ice Cole fight a rematch of their Rock'em Sock'em majority draw from December. April's Boxing After Dark showcases Ivan Robinson. Coming off his second victory over Arturo Gatti, he now faces Angel Manfredi, who's moving up five pounds to 135. Also, Floyd Mayweather, conqueror of Manfredi, defends his 130-pound crown against veteran Goyo Vargas in another championship fight. And two days from now, HBO presents the next edition of Sports of the 20th Century, Dare to Compete, the Struggle of Women in Sports. This historical documentary chronicles the history of women in sports, depicting how the suffrage movement, the 60s, and Title IX helped set the stage for today's women athletes. That's Monday, right here on HBO. After the heavyweight fight, this one seems a little no, timid and tactical so far. The heavyweight battle, if you missed it, was all-out warfare between Lou Savarese and Lance Mount Whitaker, culminating in a split decision for Savarese. David Reed decides to double jab. He never loses his balance. Steps and slides. 
Buduani shows enough respect in the early going for Reed's speed and punching power that by CompuBox numbers, he's been throwing only 27 punches around, landing at a higher rate than Reed, but you wonder how many rounds he can win on the scorecards when Reed throws so many more punches. Now he's got him moving. You got to keep him moving. Reed has got him off balance, trying to find his footwork, going to the body. That's what you want to do. Keep it going like that all night. Making your opponent try to set up and restart things. And Reed keeps going to the body with the right hand, trying to bring Buduani's left down. That's what he's done. He's thrown the right hand to the body over and over. Sooner or later, it starts to hurt, and Buduani starts dropping his hand more to protect his side. And that would make the opening for Reed's right cross, which is his thunder punch. And that's what he's trying to do, and it's odd to see a guy with so few fights think like that. Floyd Patterson could think like that. Also an Olympian. Olympic I started to say, another Olympic gold medalist. Good left hook by Reed. I think it's still a little early for Reed to try to power stuff right now. Now he's staying in the pocket, Reed is. So every time this, his opponent throws a fight, a punch, he stays right there with his hands in position. And Reed snapped Budawani with an uppercut. The Frenchman in this round has been limited to throwing one punch at a time, as he seems to exhibit greater and greater respect for David Reed's punching power. You watch Reed, whenever there are some punches thrown, his hands are covered up, covering him up very good. He doesn't jump out of the way. Reed more and more on the attack. And Budawani retaliating, but with one punch at a time. Now there's a good combination by Budawani. Yep. Now he goes back to combination punching, the left of the body, the right upstairs. Good right hand again by Boudouin. He was sneaking little right hand. He decoys you into a position where he can attack you with that right hand, and he's landed three of them in a row. David Reed's mouthpiece dropped to the canvas during that round. Wasn't a good idea, son. Yeah, no. Reed is doing a lot of talking okay. during the Stay fight. calm, control, move, don't wait for him. You have to box him. Be smart. Joe, get this guy out of the corner at the belt. The trainer. You're the champ. It's too slow, going out. Ah, okay. Box him. You work to the jab and go to the body. It's there all day. Stop looking for anything else. You understand what I'm saying? Now, take a deep breath, champ. Okay, now listen, you work the jabs. Take the scores. Reed did work on the body early in that round. Some vicious shots, as you saw there. Controlled most of the early part of the round. The Dwani is a cagey and a cagey veteran who, who projects the attitude of I'm a winner in here. He seems very calm in the face of a better young athlete, perhaps, but he knows what he's doing. So, George, we heard Al Mitchell say to Reed, you work to the body and fire the jab, quit looking for anything else. That's right, because you get a little careless thinking, hey, I got him. This guy's KG. He's accustomed to adversity. He's not going to fold. Harold, how do you have it through four? Jim, three rounds to one, 39, 37, David Reed. Jim, I tell you something. The unusual thing about this fight to me is I never saw a right-handed fighter throw so many right-hand leads in my entire life. The right group one, he doesn't snap a left jab. I mean, it's virtually all right-hand leads. He landed him real good in the first round. That's the round they gave him. But from then on in, David Reed saw it coming. He's been blocking him and doing a nice job coming forward, carrying the pace of his fight. So I think Reed's out punching him. And Reed, obviously listening well to Mitchell, has followed the plan in this round, working the jab and going to the body. Whenever Reed decides to be a little subtle, who'd want to attack with these quick lead right hand? Reed still is not taking the advice of his corner. Stop looking for the big shot. Just do something. Good left jab now. That left jab can carry David Reed to a title if he just trusts in it. 
if he has faith in his dominance via the jab and sticks with it all night long, he's going to walk out of here with a title belt. And Reed has got excellent vision. No punches are thrown. He'll get right in there and look at what he's doing and throw shots. McGuire is showing that he feels he has to engage Reed more. And you suspect that Buduani, who's always been partial to the right-hand lead, is more so tonight looking at Reed's droopy left eyelid in front of him. And in fact, there's a welt, a lump that's grown under the left eye of Reed. Sure is. And that welt is getting much bigger in this round as Buduani has landed a couple of those right-hand leads again. Which makes you wonder just how clearly Reed is seeing that punch. Reed has got excellent vision. I can tell you that the way he sits in the pocket whenever Boot want to throw in combination. You can only do that with sight. Yeah, Reed is landing his jab at a higher and higher rate of accuracy as the fight goes on. And that's what the champion should not allow him to do. Don't let him get confident with his left jab. You can almost see Budawani's mind working, saying, I can close that left eye. I'm not that far away from closing it right now. Hey, Inspector, get this guy out of the corner before the bell rings. Hey, hand me your mouth, please. Okay. Here, rinse this off. Hand it back to me. And listen to it, the key is right. Don't you see the only thing like I tell you is that right hand you try to bring it under and over? Yeah. You hook off it or go to the right away from it. Come, okay? Use your right hand. The jab is there. Stop looking for the single shot. You did right at the beginning when you threw the combination. Punching combination. And from the back. Know he doesn't know how to move backwards. Make him work. Tire him. Stay calm. Control. Here's Budwani, whose best weapon has been that sneak right hand on the closed eyelid and on the mouse. It doesn't carry much power, the power of a, a good hard jab, but it is effective. Cut man Fred Jenkins able to bring some of the swelling down on David Reed's left eye between rounds, but you wonder how well Reed sees the right hand leads coming as Budwani goes back to work with his bread and butter punch. Reed's corner told him to move over and away from that right hand. Stay on the left side a little bit. Use his own right hand. Let's see if he follows that direction, those directions. So far he did. Whatever you want to do, you hit him with your left and then move to your right. So the Budwani will have to travel a longer distance to throw that right hand lead. Yeah, you want to just stay on the outside, then you can do it all night if you're quick enough. Reed threw 55 jabs in the last round as Al Mitchell com continues to demand that he step up the jab output. Then he says, under and over with the right hand. Reed's still trying to force the issue with the right hand. Needs to go back to the body. He did, and that was a good body punch. Okay. You see Boot one and waving his left hand is because that body shot hurt. Or made him pay some attention. But Reed is not following the direction to stay over on the left, over the right side. Boot one is left side. Stay over there. Boot one, whenever he's moving, he's thinking about doing something. be accurate with those right hands to the body because that's when you start hurting your hands. Well, one thing is for certain, thus far in his bid for a world title, David Reed has had a much tougher assignment than did Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Gennaro Hernandez or Fernando Vargas against Yori Boy Campus, and both of those looked like formidable opponents coming in. But one is thinking consistently. He's thinking. He moves out of the way a little bit, but he has a plan. There you go. Solid right, right hand lead by Boudouin. And another one. And the Frenchman suddenly goes to work with the left hand. And again lands the right hand lead. And again, you gotta wonder if Reed sees it coming. 
No, Boudoir's smart. Boudoir is smart. He moves, he makes you think, I'm afraid. I'm hurt. Then he comes back and hurts you. I call a clever boxer. Good right hand to the body by Reed. Reed is standing still again. His corner told him to move to the left of the champion. Ludwani is like a right-hand pitcher who delivers from different angles. He's got a little of the, the Kevin Brown and the David Cohn in him in that he'll throw that right-hand lead over the top. He'll throw it from a three-quarter angle or he'll throw it from the side. He got caught with a left hook this time. <laughs> Good left hook by Reed. Yeah. Comment ça va? Souffle bien. Okay, breathe. Breathe. Let the water plays. I go. With the bartender. You have to keep your hands up. Make him work. <laughs> Donut. I'm hitting them. Be smart. Got one punch he's trying to hit you with. The right hand hook and the right uppercut. You understand what I'm saying? with the jab. Hit him here. Hit him here. Throw the right hand there and a straight right hand there. You understand? Go, go, let's go, let's go. In the mouthpiece. Fascinating fight to score as we go into the seventh. Reed landing more punches. Uduani very sparing in his punch output, but landing hard when he lands. That boot one is very smart. He took charge in the beginning of the round to make this youngster think, hey, I'm coming after you. Then he settles back into his counter punching position. Uduani not throwing punches to begin the seventh, and David Reed landing a couple of combinations to seize the initiative in the round. One is clever, moves left, he moves right, drops his hand, and then looks at something and think about what he's going to do. You want to start thinking about winning this fight soon, George, because uh, he, he's not doing much in landing enough punches. He has a flurry or two during the round. It doesn't do... Now we have some left hooks to the body by uh, David Reed. You're right. You're right. Otherwise, Reed's been landing the right hand of the body all night. Now he's started to land the left as well. Larry? Uh, you wonder why does a champion come to the other guy's home territory to fight him? Uh, the reason is, is that Bidwani's gotten by far the biggest purse of his life, a million-dollar purse. And if he loses a close decision here, well, he... He took a million dollars for his title. And he can always claim, he can go back to Europe and claim that he didn't have a chance to win on Reed's home court anyway. Left hook lands for Reed. But one has got a lot of pride, guys. He's going to try to do everything he can to win this fight. You see him trying to get position to get this guy back? When you get in that ring, the last thing on your mind is your money. Judges have been brought in by the governing body. They are from Tijuana, Valencia, Venezuela, and one from New Jersey. So it's an international group. Reed missing over the top with the right hand and shaking his head as if to say, I almost had you. Udwani lands his right hand lead again, but not as much mustard on it as was the case earlier in the fight. The second one was a little better. Now Udwani has got David Reed trying to set up, moving in and out of position. He's giving him some of his own medicine. Good combination by Reed. Double the right, double right, right the body, double right, right upstairs, double and right hand, moment double right hand. Stunt. And a level lands for Bodwani. Reed in trouble, grabs and holds on. Makes that an interesting round to score. It was Reed's round for two minutes and 45 seconds. Then Budwani had the big rally. You understand what I'm saying? Counter don't mean nothing if you use your jab like we did in the gym workout. Your double jabs, you can't counter it. Stop thinking about him countering. You use your double jab, he can't counter it. Number two, you, you go to the right. 
Now remember, here's a rally at the end of the round. Bedwani has done this consistently through the fight, hoping to win a round with a big rally somewhere during the round, usually in the last minute. He might have pulled it out with this rally. It's okay. Keep moving forward. Keep your hands up. Okay, take him down. Despite the big rally at the end of the preceding round, CompuBox numbers gave Reed an edge in power punches landed in the round. You can now see Reed, that Harold Letterman scored it for the Frenchman, yes? Early on, Reed would stay in the pocket whenever this guy would attack him. Now he's starting to back up. Now you can get caught. You want to stay close and cover up, use your defense. That's why he was able to get caught with three or four right hands, backing up. Out is scheduled for 12 rounds. Laurent Boudouani's world championship at 154 pounds on the table for the winner here. The champion is in, in the kind of territory he wants to be in. 12 rounds. Oh, good right hand by David Reed. Reed's biggest right cross of the fight lands flush on the cheek of Boudouani. And we learn one more thing about the Frenchman, which is that he brought a beard with him. <laughs> he can take a shot. No question he can take a shot. There are a lot of 154-pound fighters who are getting up off the canvas now when Reed lands that right hand. One is thinking at this point. David Reed is sitting there trying to be a counter puncher. You can't do that with this guy. Reed seemingly a little more tentative here in round eight. Perhaps the result of the Budawani rally that ended round seven. the biggest punch of the round, which was that clean right cross. Boot one, he moves to, to Reed's left side. He seemed to think there's problems over there, and he stays consistently over there. And Reed backs him up with a double jab and a right hand. Now Reed is staying in the pocket. He's not backing away, you see. Stays away from harm. Reed dropped his left hand inside and gave Budwani a shot with the right. David's hand speed apparent in the exchange just like that. You got to stand right there, use your pivot, and get closer. Don't back away. Good power in the right hand by the champion. Reed puts his left glove up by the side of his head to try to continue to protect against Laurent Boudouani's chopping right hand shots. Oh, great work with the left hand by Reed there. To the body, to the head. Be smarter, but he's more active than you are. You're too late. You're waiting too much. You have to make the difference, champ. He's almost gone. You have to make the difference, champ. Don't let him back in. You're quicker than him, fast him. Just score points. That's all I want. Outbox this kid, okay? And the kid's going to the right, okay? All right? That's where he do all this work. You hear more urgency coming from Budwani's corner. Trainer is Budwani's brother, and he was the one who was telling him, Reed is busier than you are. You're going to have to step it up. 
Bob, how do you have it? Jim, 78, 74, six rounds to two, David Reed. He's out boxing him, out working him, there's no question. He's winning a clean punching by the effect of aggressive. There's certainly a good defense. See that? He blocks those shots. He gets his hands up high. The elbow's in tight. Good defense by David Reed. He got nailed in the seventh by dropping his hands. But I got to point out one thing. Look at Judge Fernando Viso on our right side, Jim. The shell out carries Bukwani's promoter. Keeps looking over his shoulder. He did that to me in Paris in a tire fight. I don't think that's fair. They ought to get our carries out of there. He has no right talking to the judge or looking at scores. You're saying, Harold, that a carries is doing what? Look, he's looking over the shoulder of Judge Fernando Viso to see how he's scoring the fight. Watch. And the good thing about David Reed, he's been in Philadelphia, so he's accustomed to trading shots. You don't want to get him to doing that. You want to hit him and get out of the way. Reed has taken the training in Denver before his fights. He trained in Denver before this one, and one reason is that there are gym wars in Philadelphia. There are so many good sparring partners there who want to make a name for themselves against big-name fighters, and he doesn't want the wear and tear, which he thinks has limited the star potential of some Philly fighters in the past. Reed trying to go to the body with the right hand, a little bit low. He pounded Budwani on the upper hip. Now he gets in a right-hand body shot. Some of them are low, though. Yep. Oh, the referee should step in and talk about that. And Randy Newman does. Newman, a former fighter himself. A good it heavyweight. To, it looks to me as though Budwani has an abrasion or some kind of a cut near his left eye. Boy, David Reed is dropping his left hand as though he's inviting that right hand by Budwani. Budwani throwing the right hand lead, but not with as much Christmas on it as was the case before. Ooh. Oh, brilliant left hook by Reed. He set it up with the two body shots. Budwani wobbles. Reed goes to work. And you can bet that Kenyon will be holding here. He's brave, that champion, as he has a lot of courage. Right hand shot lands for Reed. Budwani in serious trouble. Landed another right to the temple. Now Reed is want, he's going to concentrate and be him and calculate what he's doing. At this point, you can throw a lot of power away. Put the punches together and let the power develop it out by itself. Closing seconds of the round. Bell will save Budwani from further harm. David Reed is a great right-hand puncher, but it was a left hook that stunned Budwani there. The only thing I don't like you dropping your head. Keep it Big breath. Big breath. Let's go. Whip round now. The one punch in this fight that has made a difference, right here, a right and a left to the body, followed by a wonderful Philadelphia left hook to the jaw. Brilliant round for Reed. He landed 29 of 32 power shots by CompuBox estimation in that round. You see the abrasions around Budwani's left eye. Readers better be careful. Take your time. Get back behind your left jab because Budwani, it's n he's not a coward and he can punch. And I can feel you smiling, George, when Al Mitchell said to Reed, the only thing I don't like is you dropping your hands. Yep. This champion, Budwani, is very smart and he's been in this kind of position before. There are a lot of fighters who are at their most dangerous when they seem to be in trouble. Budwani not throwing much to begin round 10, but Reed offering respect and a little caution as he looks to get started again. He was smart enough to go to the body. Budwani. Now he's, he's got things back under control. Reminds me of a fighter, Heinz Matson. Doesn't always often try to throw go it to the body. Heinz Matson? Yeah, he always try to go to the body from Germany. You Meanwhile, Budwani, who seldom throws a jab, throws three or four. Oh, left hook by Reed. More body shots from Reed. That's what set up the great left hook in the last round. Randy Newman 
telling Reed that another low blow will bring a one-point penalty. And David Reed has got to be smart. Go to the left jab. Do everything behind your jab. Fake, faint. Use a little footwork. Look at how well-conditioned the young fighter is, George. I'm still surprised. Well, 11 fights, guy, he has that much condition. I'm He's shocked. Brilliant. Still moving his head, still moving his feet in the right directions. He better because that boot one is he won that get him. Whoa! Oh, a brilliant right hand. You saw it. Good well, we talked about that capacity to be dangerous when you're in trouble. What a shot in the dark that was. David Reed has better hold on. He better hold on and be careful. Boot one has been in this position before, and he knows how to fight in adversity. David Reed has turned into the old plowing puncher now and gotten away from all of his skill and speed. Oh, jabs and body punches got Reed into that position of dominance. He should go back to jabs and body punches now. As his trainer, Al Mitchell, said, it's there all night. And he's dropping his hand when his trainer told him, do not do that. And Guduani's looking to get off another right-hand lead. And he keeps moving his waist, left, right, left, right, measuring for a right hand. Good fight. Great fight. Hey, David. I want to see more low blows. It's going to cost you next time. Don't miss your chance. Laurent, don't miss your chance. You can finish him. Bullshit. Just be smart. If you really want, if you really think, and you throw it in the air, and you throw it in the air, but you destroy it. 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 You Suck it up and start doubling the jab now. Reed, once again with the left hand. If they take away your best weapon, which is his right, you have to find a way to beat the opponent without it. But there you saw Boudouani, who was showing, him to showing himself to be a real prize fighter. One of the better European prize fighters we have seen in recent years. Told you, it wasn't about money. Round 11. And there's the Letterman card. He gave Buduani the last round. Buduani is smelling knockout. He smells it, and he's going to try to get it. And you heard Luis Acarius in his corner saying, you've got to finish him. Go get him. You can do it. You don't want to follow him around if you're David Reed. You want to keep your jab following him around. He waits until you stop jabbing, then he come and get you. Uduani throwing caution to the wind as he tries to reel in David Reed with power shots. At no point has Al Mitchell told his fighter to go out and finish Budwani. You get the impression that Al would be pleased as punch if his man were coast to a decision victory. But it's not going to be easy. Budwani makes the challenger follow him around, follow him around. Then when he stops, he attacks. jab and keeps up the tempo, Buduani's more or less helpless against him. But when Reed stops, Buduani attacks with the right hand. Buduani suddenly turning southpaw. Steps into a southpaw stance. The, David Reed, he has a lot of experience, international experience, so the southpaw stuff is not going to bother him. And Buduani seemingly recognizes that as he steps back into his conventional stance. Now Reed is starting to reach, step out. And he's playing into the champions. Buduani landing another right. And Reed stops punching as Buduani fires. Buduani is trying to play catch up. And he's playing it very well here. 
question of whether he has the power to do something dramatic. Good hard right uppercut in there by Reed. And Reed is, like I said earlier, he's been in Philadelphia, so he's not he's not ashamed to fight. But he's got an instinct to trade with Buduani, and I have a feeling that Mitchell might be happier if he would box it. But now he, you can throw that away now. He's not going to box. This guy's not going to allow him to box. You're going to have to stand there and fight. Good left hook by Reed. Buduani still attacking with the right. this round. You understand what I mean? I want you boxing. Breathe. Breathe. You don't know what's going to happen. You have to take him down. You have three minutes, not three hours. Give, give it all. Okay? Step around. All right? He needs this round. You want to win it. Okay? This is very close. So go now. You have to do it. This is the last. In round 11, for the first time in the bout, CompuBox numbers found Buduani throwing more punches and landing more than Reed. 28 out of 63. By far, numerically, the best round of the bout for Buduani. Included in there, a 24 to 7 edge in power shots. And you heard Buduani's corner saying, knock him out. You heard Al Mitchell say, I want you to win the round. He will, Reed will not be able to win it with a left jab. He's going to have to get in there and wade in and do the Philadelphia. Harold, how do you have it going to the final stand? Jim, 106, 102, seven rounds to four. David Reed, I just think he outworked him. Busier guy, better boxer. Certainly, I had to give Buguani rounds 10 and 11. He came on strong. There's no question. He's trying to pull this fight out, but I think he needs a knockout to win it, Jim. I think David Reed's controlling it with his boxing. And a moment ago, you saw a brilliant Reed combination as he tries to produce an Oscar De La Hoya style 12th round rally to satisfy his man, Al Mitchell's demand. And you're right, George. It's a fight. And Reed is ready for the fight. Brilliant hand speed for Reed as he fires his combinations and makes his statement. Trying to take a title belt in a real test against a tough champion. You got to ask Reed, what are you saving it for? This is it. Don't hold back. Right hand landed in close for Reed. Buduani has not been able to land one of his big right hand leads so far in the round. Reed much busier. Now Reed Buduani is walking in without throwing punches. Reed cannot walk in without throwing punches. Why, why would Buduani turn into a southpaw at this stage of the game? He, he's trying to hold himself from being knocked out, and that's smart. Anything it takes, don't quit. Oh, another brilliant left hook by Reed. This is championship stuff that David Reed has produced in this round. On demand, combinations, high energy, the kind of rally necessary to leave no doubt. Trying to become the third member of his Olympic class to win a world championship. Looking down the road toward potentially huge fights against Fernando Vargas, against Oscar De La Hoya or Felix Trinidad or Ike Quarte or some combination of the three. A left hand by Buduani. Snaps Reed's head back. That hurt, and it gets all into the bottom of your knees. You got to fight out of it. David goes down to one knee. Randy Newman calls it a slip. A fight to the finish. They forgot to even say 10 seconds. Boy. I had Reed winning the fight. I, it's hard to take a champion's title when he fights like that for the last two rounds. 
But I think Reed won the 12th round big because he dominated the first two minutes of the round before Buduani finally rallied at the end. Box numbers in the final round. David Reed threw 70 punches. His most active round in the second half of the fight. Landed 34 and had a 30 to 16 edge in power shots. It was the kind of rally that champions produce when they absolutely have to have it. You got to be a champ all the way from the first to the, especially the final three minutes. <laughs> Harold, how'd you have the fight? <laughs> 116, 111, eight rounds to four, David Reed. I, I also gave him the 12 round chin. There's no question. He carried it for two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes before Bubuani came on. I mean, absolutely, David won that 12 round. But you got to give David a 10-8 round in round nine. I mean, that, that was the really big defining round in the entire fight. He staggered him. He certainly deserves an extra point in the ninth round. So David Reed by five points. There's no question he won a fight. An interesting battle that was a tactical fight through the first six or seven rounds. Then, as Laurent Boudouani sensed the desperation of his situation and stepped up the attack, it became, as George Foreman called it, an all-out Philadelphia fight in the last five rounds. Here's some action from the closing stanzas, starting in round number nine, when David Reed was able to hurt Boudouani with that staggering left hook there. And then in round 10, as Reed was trying to follow up the assault, and again landed the left in close, Budwani came back with his right hand shots and momentarily staggered Reed. Then in the last round, when Al Mitchell told his fighter to go out and win the round, David Reed left no doubt with combination punching like that in the first two minutes of the round. But as had been his habit throughout the fight, Budwani rallied in the last 30 seconds, landing that one big left hand before the bell sounded to end the 12 rounds. Budwani just didn't want to do anything but a hard right hand here and there. A good left hook behind it could have changed everything tonight. Reed, the more well-rounded fighter, showing a greater variety of skills throughout the bout, Buduani has a game plan all his own, and you can certainly see how it's been effective throughout his career. Did you win the fight or did you beat the champion? That's what the judges are asking themselves right now. Well, here's the answer as we go to Michael Buffer in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Bally's Park Place, Atlantic City, New Jersey, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Fernando Visto scores the bout 118 to 112. Alejandro Rochin scores at 117 to 112. John Stewart scores at 117 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new WBA Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, the American Dream, David Reed. punch stat numbers and you can see the margin by which Reed outlanded Boudouani markedly more active throwing 335 more punches than the Frenchman did Frenchman landing at a very high rate of accuracy as his right hand lead constantly targeted David Reed's drooping left eyelid jabs in the bout Boudouani scarcely throws jabs only an average of about 10 per round Reed throwing a lot of them not landing at a particularly high rate, but the activity level was important in setting up his power punches, which he landed at an astonishing rate of accuracy. Look at that, 145 out of 254 crosses, hooks, and uppercuts. That ultimately gave Reed the margin of victory in a unanimous decision that was slightly more one-sided than you might have expected it to be. And now Larry Merchant stands by with the third member of the 1996 American Olympic boxing team to have won a world title, David Reed. All right, thank you very much, Jim, and congratulations, David. You said that this was going for another 
gold medal. Does it feel that way? Well, it felt just like it. You know, I was in my hometown crowd, and uh, everybody was here for me. They was pulling for me. First of all, I would like to thank America Presents and, uh, and uh, everybody that was in my corner out there around the country, around the world. And uh, it was a it, it was a, tr a well hard, tremendous fight. You know, the guy did not want him to give his belt up. Everyone thought of you coming out of the Olympics as a one punch kind of fighter. But you had to show tonight that you have learned a lot since that time to be able to beat a clever and tough boxer as Budwani was. Well, Budwani, like I said before, Budwani was tough. He. Uh, he didn't want to lose his belt today, but I had to take it to him the last round and show him who was the better man. Did you do anything to adjust to the fact that he was hitting you with those sneak right hands? Well, uh, it was very sneaky. You know, the whole time in his training camp, I know he was working on it because of my left eye. But, you know, as you can see, uh, that wasn't a factor. He caught me with a couple of good right hands, but I was able to stand up to it. Were you ever hurt by any punches he threw? Uh, he shook me a couple of times. I ain't gonna lie, but you know, every fighter gets shook. Is if if you can get shook, can you come back? And I came back. It looked as though you had a chance to close the show in the eighth round. Do you remember how that went? What was going through your mind after you heard him? Yeah, uh, I was exchanging him from the body, and I end up uh, end up throwing a left hook from the body, and you know, it hit him, and he was shook. You know, so. I tried to take him out, but I couldn't. You know, he was a more veteran to uh, stay in the fight. What are your thoughts about joining Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Fernando Vargas, your Olympic teammates, as a professional champion? I feel real good. You know, when I fought in the Olympic trials, you know, in the Olympic box off, uh, Zaire Rahim and, and uh, Terrence Carlton, they all fought first, and I was the last Philadelphia guy to make the to make the uh, the Olympic team, so you know it's the same there. You know I was the last one to win uh, a world title, so uh, now I join the pack. Don't count me out. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will. Thank you very very much, David Reed. I guess just this final thought about these remarkable young men from the 1996 Olympic team, which is that there is no Y2K problem for the youth of America. The millennium bug will be squashed as they rush in to the new century, the next generation of American champions. Jim?